These bearings are about an eighth of an inch thick and have an outer diameter of 5 sixteenths. The inner diameter is 3 sixteenths of an inch. The hole drilled through the column is 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, for the most part. The hole that is drilled through the column is centered at 2 and 5 sixteenths of an inch from the base. This is the same height as the center of the hole in the aluminum support column. Now I'm going to remove the cylinder that houses the graphite piston. This cylinder is part of the actuator I got from AirPot.com. The metallic end came pre-threaded with this thin nut at the end. This nut is at most 9 16 of an inch wide, which fits nicely inside the first orange rubber washer. I widened the hole in this actuator to 1 quarter inch, which is as wide as I could drill it without ruining the threads on the threaded end. This quarter inch hole is 5 16 long. The Pyrex portion of this actuator has an outer diameter of 23 30 seconds and an inner diameter of 5 8 I cut the Pyrex cylinder's length to 1 and 3 8 of an inch. This allows the connecting rod to rotate at greater angles. If you check out the first engine video I uploaded on my other channel, you'll see I left the Pyrex cylinder fairly long and so I had to lengthen the connecting rod on that engine as well as the distance from the flywheel support column to the aluminum support column. The longer the connecting rod is, the less it rotates with each revolution of the flywheel and the less likely it is to hit the walls of the Pyrex cylinder. Let's take a closer look at the graphite piston. The length of this piston is 1 half inch. The diameter is 5 eighths of an inch. The connecting rod that connects the piston to the flywheel is about 3 inches long. This bearing has an outer diameter of 1 quarter inch and an inner diameter of 1 16th of an inch. The total weight of the piston with the connecting rod and the bearing that connects to the flywheel is 4 grams. Now to remove this Pyrex cylinder I just have to unscrew it. It does take a little force to loosen it up. I added this black rubber washer to keep air from leaking from the Pyrex test tube side to outside of the engine by seeping past the thin nut. This rubber washer has an outer diameter of 5 eighths of an inch and an inner diameter of 1 half inch. Let's take a gander at this aluminum support column. The aluminum support column is held in place by two aluminum brackets. These aluminum brackets squeeze the aluminum support column with two half inch number 6-32 bolts. I use two washers for a better grip. The brackets are secured to the wooden base with two one inch long number 6-32 bolts. These are the same type of bolts I used on the large metal washer. I drilled two slots in each of the two brackets, but it only took two bolts through one of the brackets to hold the support column in place. Each bolt has a washer on both sides of the wooden base. These brackets are one and one half inches wide. The sides of the brackets that touch the wooden base are seven eighths of an inch. The sides that clamp the aluminum support column are one and a half inch tall. The slots in the brackets are about three eighths of an inch long and are supposed to be an eighth of an inch wide. They didn't turn out so well, but they still serve their purpose. The thickness of the brackets is about 1 16th of an inch. The purpose of drilling slots through the brackets rather than just one hole is to allow the aluminum support column to move closer or further away from the flywheel. It's important to have the graphite piston just about touch the metal of the cylinder. If the graphite piston makes contact with the metal and has to push the aluminum support column with each revolution of the flywheel, there's going to be some energy wasted and the engine won't perform as well as it could. The graphite piston can also be damaged that way. On the other hand, if the closest the graphite piston gets to the metal end of the cylinder still leaves a lot of air in the cylinder, you'll notice a big performance loss. The aluminum support column is 3 inches tall and 1 and 1 half inches wide. The four smaller holes at the top are 1 eighth inch in diameter and they're about 7 eighths apart. The large hole near the top has a diameter of 3 eighths of an inch and the center point is 2 and 5 sixteenths of an inch from the bottom. The two large holes at the bottom are each 1 quarter inch in diameter. Their center points are 5 sixteenths of an inch from the bottom and are 5 eighths apart. The reason these holes are much bigger than the 1 eighth inch diameter bolts that are running through them is so the aluminum support column can be adjusted slightly. These extra large holes allow the support column to be moved from side to side or up and down as much as an eighth of an inch. This way the connecting rod can be made perfectly parallel with the flywheel. The thickness of the aluminum support column is about 1 eighth of an inch. The base of the engine is made of wood and is 9 inches by 7 inches. Its thickness is 5 eighths of an inch. I spray painted the base with this brown textured spray paint. On the bottom of the base I've added four felt pads. 
The Fresnel lens I used for solar power I got from an office supply store. It's known as a page magnifier. It's about 11 inches by 8 and 1 quarter inches, but the actual magnifying portion is 10 and 7 sixteenths by 7 and 7 eighths. Alright, that's all the dimensions of all the parts and a little explanation as to why I use some parts. Uh, be sure and subscribe if you want to see some more videos like these.